Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm just introducing the concept of static equilibrium in three dimensions and also going to be going over a couple of the different common support reactions that we can find in these types of problems. So previously, up until now, we've just been looking at 2D problems, something like this, where we have um, just two axes, we say X and Y. And for this to be in static equilibrium, we need the sum of forces in the X direction to be zero, the sum of forces in the Y direction to be zero, and the sum of moments about some point to be zero. And that's because if we had some net force going in the x direction, well then this object would want to translate in the x direction. If we had some for net force that's not zero going in the y direction, again this object would want to translate up. And if we have some moment um, like this, uh, that just means that we have a moment that's non-zero. That means that this object would have the tendency to want to trans or to want to rotate. Um, and then again, this object would not be in static equilibrium. So if all of those are set to zero, then we have static equilibrium in two dimensions. In three dimensions, it's a pretty similar process. Um, what we're going to have here is we'll actually need six different equations of equilibrium. And that reason is if we have some force going in the x direction, a net force that's not zero, then this object will translate in the x direction. Same thing in the y direction like we just talked about here. It could translate upwards. Or if there's a net force here in the z direction, this object could slide in the z direction. So we already have three equations of equilibrium in 3D, and we've just talked about translation. Um, obviously, we have to consider about what happens if this object is rotating. So if you imagine this object was rotating sort of in this direction, that's basically the same thing as it rotating about the x-axis. So we can draw on uh, a moment like this, uh, and this would just say that we have to make sure that the sum of moments about the x-axis is equal to zero. Otherwise, it will be rotating. It will have the tendency to rotate. Um, we also need to think about what if it was rotating about this axis, just like that. So just about the y-axis. Maybe draw that arrow in there. Uh, so we have to say that for this, again, to be a static equilibrium, the sum of moments about the y-axis also has to be equal to zero. And lastly, what if it was rotating like uh, this way? Well, that's just a rotation about the z-axis. And we'd have to say for this to be in static equilibrium, the sum of moments about the z-axis must be equal to zero. So really, when we were looking at a 2D problem, we had sum of force in x, sum of force in y, and technically this is this moment that we were looking at in the 2D problems was actually just our sum of moments about the, the z-axis, right? Because z-axis would come out something like that. So there you go. This is how we get six equations of equilibrium in a 3D problem. And as long as we can solve all of these to be zero, then we'll know that our object is in static equilibrium. Or how these problems usually go is we'll be told that our object is in static equilibrium, and then we'll use the knowledge that these are all zero to find the support reactions and maybe even an unknown applied force. So now I guess I'll just run through a couple examples of common reactions supports that we can find in 3D problems. So ball and socket is a typical connection that we can have in 3D. Imagine that the socket here is actually fixed to the ground and uh, the ball here allows it to rotate freely in any direction. You could, If this was just a stick, you could grab it and you can push it in it, pull it and you know rotate it in any direction about the origin here. Um, but if you wanted to try and pull this and just translate this, uh, this rod here to the left or to the right, you'd notice because this the socket connection is not actually able to translate. So that means that this uh, this connection would be able to basically provide a reaction support or a force that would prevent or resist sort of any sort of force in the x direction. So if this is at let's say point A, the the reaction force that we would call this would just be A x. Uh, similarly, you can't pull this out of the socket straight up. So this is this type of connection is able to uh, provide a support in the y direction. So we would call that A y. And then similarly, we can't translate it this direction either because this is fixed to the floor and the ball and socket connection, the nature of it. So we'd have a Z, but we're not getting any moment. We're not getting any reaction moments here because like I said, you can just easily rotate this around. It's like your hip. You can just twist it in any direction that you want and it should, uh, it should be fine. Uh, something that we could do here though, if we were to put this basically on rollers, so instead of fixing this to the floor, um, and we just put some rollers here, then uh, we would just call it a roller support, 
And so you wouldn't be able to get any of those moments of resistance either because same thing, you can still twist this in any direction you want. But now if you tried to pull it to the right, it would just slide to the right because it's on wheels. If you tried to push it this way, assuming this XZ plane forms a sort of floor, then it would slide this way. Um, the only force that this would be able to resist is if you pushed down on it, uh, it wouldn't go through the floor. So we would be getting some force here again, assuming this is point A, we'd actually be able to get a reaction force in the y direction and actually specifically only in the upwards direction because if you tried to lift this off the floor uh, it would just come right off the floor so that's something to watch out too for uh, in 3d problems but we've already seen a little bit of that in the 2d problems we can get a similar situation here if we just have a rod in contact with a smooth surface so if we just have some rod here in contact with a smooth surface you can imagine if we tried to apply a force to it in the x direction the positive x direction it would freely slide in that direction same thing if we tried to apply a force in the z direction it would just freely slide if we tried to push it down into the floor the floor would put there basically just push back on us and we would get the reaction force so assuming this is again this point a then we would get some reaction force a y if we wanted to rotate this in any direction it, this smooth, so you can imagine this if you have your pen on the table or a piece of a block of ice you can just rotate your pen in any direction so that re that connection the where the pen is touching the table or this rod is touching some smooth surface obviously would provide no actual ability to resist any moments that you're applying uh, if we have contact with a rough surface then we'll still get that same uh, reaction in the y direction right because we're able to if we try and push this into the floor the floor will resist us but if we do have a rough surface then we'll have to consider friction uh, so if we were to apply some force in the positive x direction the friction uh, would actually be able to provide some amount of resistance so we'll just again assuming this is point a uh, we would get some amount of reaction force uh, from this connection uh, we'd call that a x and same thing if we tried to slide it across a rough surface in the z direction we would get some amount of resistance in the z direction. Um, another common connection that we can have is a hinge in 3D. So if you imagine a hinge like you would have just on a door or something, and this is fixed to where we have our hinge here is blue and these brown things are like doors or other kind of fixed compartments or you know substantial things that are being connected. Um, if we if we attempted to translate all this stuff in the x direction, it's not going to be able to go because imagine maybe this is a wall and this is a door or something like that. So this hinge setup will provide us with a, uh, one force component in the x direction. So again, we'll just put some point A or something. We'll say that this is uh, AX, right? If you pull on your door, you can't translate your door away from the frame that it's connected to because it has hinges. Uh, same thing, we can do that in any direction. So we'd have a Y, make sure that's nice. Uh, and we'd also have another one, a Z, right? You cannot translate a door. That's a really good example. Um, but doors, because this hinge, uh, it can freely rotate about the hinge axis. And in this case, I have the hinge axis uh, lined up in the exact same orientation as the Z axis or parallel to the Z axis. Um, so we can apply a moment and swing this door around the door frame all day long on z-axis but you're not able to rotate a door in any other direction and that's because it's providing that sort of resistive moment um, imagine grabbing your uh, well just imagine trying to rotate the door in any direction other than the hinge axis it doesn't work so we're not able to rotate it um, like from top if you're looking at the door straight on from top to bottom that's impossible because of the hinges so we get this moment of uh, this sort of uh, couple component so we'd have it like this you have one about the x-axis because you can't rotate it this way because these screws basically provide a couple force that in turn provides that resistive moment so we would just call that something like M A X right because we're not able to rotate it about the x axis because that x-axis is not the axis that's lined up with the hinge axis. Uh, similarly, we cannot rotate it. We can't take this picture and sort of rotate it this way about the z-axis. That doesn't work. And so because of that, um, we get this, this moment here. We call that M A Y. So just the using it, thinking about a door and just look at any door and just try and rotate it about any axis that's not the hinge axis and you'll quickly see that that leaves us with two moments um, 
aligned properly with these axes that uh, that we it provides some resistance against or a reaction I suppose and just keep in mind that um, if the hinge axis was say lined up with the y axis then we wouldn't have this m a y and then we would have m a z so uh, don't I wouldn't look at this and think oh, okay we never have a we never have a moment in the z about the z axis that's not true it's only if it's in lined up if the hinge axis is lined up with that same axis so just watch out for that because this problem could easily be oriented with the hinge axis on any one of these axes Okay, so moving on, uh, probably the last one that I want to show you guys is just a, uh, just a fixed built-in support. So imagine here we have some rod uh, that's threaded into a base, and then that base is screwed into a floor. This is uh, like as robust of a connection as you can get, basically. We call this a built-in support or a fixed support. So obviously, just imagine trying to pull on this rod here and translate it in any of the directions. It's not going to go anywhere because it's, it's threaded into something that's screwed to the floor. Uh, so again, we'll call the origin point A or something. So we're going to get some force here. Um, we'll call that AX. Right? That's the, the reaction that's able to resist the translation in the X direction. Same thing, we would obviously get an AY and we would also obviously get an AZ. And again, if you try to imagine trying to rotate, you grab this thing and you try and rotate it about the x-axis, um, it's not going to move anywhere because it will provide you that, that sort of moment resistance, uh, so we'll call that MAX. If you do the same thing, you try and grab this and rotate it about the, x, the y direction, we get exactly the same thing, MAY. This guy's not going anywhere, and if you tried to rotate it about the Z direction, pulling it this way or pulling it that way, uh, obviously this this whole setup here is going to resist you, so we call that M A Z. Okay, perfect. So th in this case, this reaction is capable of providing, uh, or this this connection is capable of providing reactions uh, with three force components and also the three couple components. Um, whereas some of the other ones, like thinking about contact with a smooth surface, this guy's only able to provide one force component and no couple components. So I just wanted to introduce the concept about some of these different types of connections that I'll be using in the videos, uh, and that you'll also obviously see in other statics problems that you do. So thanks for watching all that, and we'll start with an example in the next video.